Find it at West Side Decorating Center. Good morning to you. Welcome to the Monday edition of the Art Lewis Show here on WSGW. Nice to have you with us. Uh, later on after the 10 o'clock news, we're going to talk to Patsy Powell from New Dimension in Bay City about their Frank Sinatra fundraising concert. It's a tribute, uh, Sinatra tribute concert that they've done. Uh, at 11 o'clock, Senior Services of Midland will be the subject of focus. But we're going to begin this hour talking about state business and what's happening in Lansing. And we do that with State Representative Tim Beeson. Tim, good morning to you. Good morning, Art. Thanks for uh, taking time out. This is a, it, it's not a Shanghai of Tim this morning. It's a, oh, wait, somehow our schedules got crossed. <laughs> and he heard me promoting him on the air. So he's been generous enough to call in, folks. I <laughs> uh, love it when it happens that way. So, Tim, uh, the budget's in place in Michigan. What do you think of it? I, I feel the budget. Um, I did not uh, support the budget this year just for some uh, budget talks that went through at the last wee minute of the hour. And I know it happens seems every year. But this year it came in at, at 12 Twelve thirty, and at five o'clock it was signed, and uh, five thirty-six in the morning after we've been there all day, it was signed and out the door. So you didn't have time to really go through it. Yeah, twelve hundred pages. No, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, but but being that said, um, it, it is uh, it just fell short in a lot of uh, some areas that I saw uh, that I was hoping for. For example, um, not just. Not just the way that we use some of the uh, money that's in the teacher's pension to fund uh, college students and or young for the school, but most of all is we already have a lot of these programs in place. Like our kids can go to junior college at most of all our high schools and already do this, right? So I just feel that when we implement something like that, um, that we should have a little more grip on it. Where I mean that is – some skin in the game. If the kids are going to get free college in our state, we should put something to say, you got to stay here and work a couple of years after we educate you. Yeah. That would I, be a smart move. Like, I, I guess my, and my question is in a state where we have to have a balanced budget, how can we do all these free things? <laughs> you and I know our, there's nothing in the world that's free. Right? Yeah. Somebody's paying for it. So, yeah, us. Uh, you know, <laughs> You know, even like when I'm doing one of my fundraisers and I'm giving away, like coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'm giving it away a brat. Like I have to pay for that, right? Or I have to get uh, a sponsor to pay for that, right? It's not free. Even though everybody comes to coffee hours, that's all not free, right? Like it, it costs money to um, have events. Somebody's it's got to cost money. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, and uh, I don't know if you saw what's going on up in, I have a couple of friends in the corrections facility around here. Like it, we gotta we gotta kind of dig into some of these areas that we have great jobs, but we don't have anybody working for them or trying to even apply for them. Yeah, and that's a, the the corrections issue and the the shortage of corrections officers. Uh, that's a scary situation for those that remain in those facilities. Yeah, and one of my old workers uh, actually just told me that they're going into mandate sixteens when they show up. You can't you can't do that. Uh, well, you can, but but there's going to be a – you shouldn't because, well, the, I mean, there's nobody that can have a, a young family or even, even have plans or even have a senior that you're at home. Like maybe you're taking care of your dad and, or mom, and, and you've got to come home at a certain time. And, you know, that it's mandates like that. Uh, so I reached out to some of my locals and said, if I, you need me to, to walk with you, I will walk with you wherever you need to go, buddy, because it's, it's crucial that we don't have people working those long hours in such a – environment like that right well and we're seeing it in the disruptions inside the prisons i mean it's uh you know it, one thing leads to another you, you got to believe that if you have uh, officers in there that are working 16 hours by the time they get to that 13th 14th 15th 16th hour they're not as sharp as they were in the second and third hour correct well well rested you know you, you gotta i mean it's kind of like going to, i would compare uh it like traveling when you're out of your element that's how a prison is all the time right because when you go traveling you have to stay sharp because you don't want to be taken advantage of and that's how that job is just like a police officer uh job you know somebody that has to be ready to be 
aware of what's going around their surroundings all the time so nothing can happen to them personally. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I really don't know the fix to the correction problem, though. Uh, I don't know if we're not paying enough to attract people, uh, if the job is is just not suited for many people. I don't know what the answer is, and it's one that we need to find. But not just with correctional facilities. There's a lot of jobs that we're just Well, that's true. That's our, true. In the service industry, like we've, we've actually made a, I mean, almost like, and they're great jobs. I mean, actually going to work and working, I don't care if you're a, a, a butcher or a plumber or a, a mechanic, right? Going to that job, it's not pushed as like a, a job that, and they're really, they're lucrative jobs. It's just the grit of going there every day at seven o'clock or six o'clock or nine until five, you know, that job is not sought after, even though it pays well. Well, there's a lot of jobs like that that pay well, but I don't know what it is with work ethic. I just don't think we're teaching it like we used to. And 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 maybe and maybe we're, it's coming back, but you're right, because uh, there's a lot of jobs just in our area. Like, we got these new companies coming in, and they need people, right? They need people. Yeah, which is, you know, it's the, the good news is we're seeing – business develop and there's a couple of pieces of bad news one are there enough people to fill like for example Corning's coming in with 1100 jobs where are we going to find those 1100 people and if we find those 1100 people where are they going to live because we have a housing shortage of affordable housing it, it, the, I, I think we're forgetting that everything is intertwined everything is dependent on each other you know every, every element is dependent on the next element you're right, and uh, and we've got to figure a way with our food, uh, and and maybe we can do that with uh, the help of MDAR to maybe make our meat processing back in our state. We've got to figure out a way that we don't keep shipping all our stuff out of our state and then buy it back after it's been processed. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how much it's crazy how much it would cost, or even some of the laws that make it so we can handle local, um, uh, almost like a cottage law for 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 chicken and for dairy and for meat. But I'm going to tell you, there's so much regulation and you're putting these mom and pop shops. I mean, if you saw what you had to do just to uh, accept deer this year, I saw on the DNR site, they're making it so that the business is, is what the, what the DNR can't do to the hunter or offer to the hunter or make them do. They're ma- mandated. They're mandating it to the business. Once again, it's just going to get more people out of the business. Yeah. I mean, that's one you ought to know close to your heart. Yeah. But- so, and that's and that's what I'm saying. Like, if we make it so tough instead of making it easier for our businesses, and now we just came down, the Supreme Court came down with that justice. If we talk about that later, that's cru- that's gonna that's gonna be, man, have a monster effect on every small business when you have paid time off, sick leave, and that tax credit go away. Somebody's got to pay for that increased cost to the business, and it, it's gonna be us, yeah, the consumer. Well, they also had the ruling uh, regarding uh, the minimum wage and the, uh, you know, petition That's drive. part of it. That's part of it. And, you know, that particular ruling, there's good news, bad news there. Uh, the bad news is that particular piece of petition is going to survive. But the good news is, and I have to say this to you because I've said it to both sides, uh, I'm happy to see that the legislature can't subvert the will of the people uh, because um, the legislature had done that for a long time. You know, you would see a piece of le- of a petition drive come down the pike and the legislature didn't like it, so they would enact it and then they'd change it. And I, I think that subverts the will of the people. And as I agree, I agree that the only thing is, is because people uh, it, it, at the top making these recommendations to the so, – so when we go into Lansing, like what the DNR, we don't make those laws that the DNR are pushing down every year, right? It comes from the NRC, which is a position that is a – appointed not people that are and then we just can kind of go with it and say yes we disagree no we don't we want to change something in boilerplate so the only concern about that is when people are uh picking rules for like our general public and we have to take the fallout even though we have no way to even 
give them their number, right? <laughs> that's that's my only concern about a lot of the stuff uh, that the Supreme Court just kind of changed, and they actually uh, they picked their own amount. So they actually went over top of it, and they decided what they felt was right instead of sending it back to the legislators. So we're going to see. It's going to be interesting because businesses are concerned right here in February 21st of 2025. All right. We're going to take, uh, take a break, come back. We're talking to State Representative Tim Beeson. We talk uh, about Quick Lane Freeland next to my car dealer, McDonald Ford in Freeland. Uh, this is your one stop for all of your routine maintenance. You need brakes? Quick Lane Freeland. You need a battery? Quick Lane Freeland. You need your oil changed? Quick Lane Freeland. Any other routine service? Quick Lane Freeland. And... If you want to stay safe in the cabin of your car, think Quick Lane Freeland because they now offer a product called Friggy Fresh. Friggy Fresh is a hospital grade disinfectant. It kills germs, odors, pollen, mildew, keeps you safe and healthy in your car. Best of all, 20 bucks, 10 minutes, no appointment needed. It's that simple. Just drive in and ask for Friggy Fresh. And drive away knowing that your car is healthy and sanitized. Quick Lane Freeland, where they work on all makes and models of cars and trucks. And they keep them in tip-top shape. Stop in for your routine maintenance as I do. Quick Lane Freeland, next to my car dealer, McDonald Ford. It's common knowledge that... Uh, To tell you that WSGW and 94.5 The Moose have teamed up with Valley Heating and Cooling to honor hometown heroes. We're asking you to submit photos and recognitions of active military, veterans, or first responders. As a special thanks to our hometown heroes, three random drawings will take place to win gifts from Valley Heating and Cooling, including a $100 Visa gift card, a free maintenance and service checkup, and a $5,000 voucher to Valley Heating and Cooling. You can see the gallery of hometown heroes and submit your heroes online at WSGW.com. The WS- Hi, we're back with you. We are chatting with State Representative Tim Beeson. And uh, he, of course, represents the 96th District in Lansing. So, Tim, I want to talk about one of your favorite topics. Bridge tolls. Okay. <laughs> what did you? What was that? My bridge, favorite topic. Bridge tolls and tolling enforcement. So I actually put amendment in uh, the bridge tolls so that kids going to and from the inside the Bay City, inside Bay County, going across the bridge, could get reimbursed from the ISD while they're going to and from um, school events, and it got cut. Of that one billion dollar, um, I know what you're talking about when you say port projects, but uh, I thought that that should be in our our school aid because kids that live in Essexville that have to drive to and from the ISD uh, after you're 16 and uh, you're not bus there, you have to pay. Did the did the Secretary of State's tolling enforcement bill go through? It did, but with my amendment. That makes it so that the Secretary of State bill went through, but not um, with our private entity, only with the bridge going across international waters. So, so it doesn't affect thought, it doesn't affect Bay City. No, th- no, I got we got an amendment in there uh, to, to make it so that way, because if you see, there's another uh, location in our state that wants to uh, sell their bridge to uh, somebody else. Uh, to another private entity, and all I saw was, when does the Secretary of the State become the collections agent for private companies? Mm. I, I must, uh, and that's that's a that's a hard no. Coming into our country is different than driving across a, a city body of water, right? Right. So I got it in there, and I guess, uh, and I, I that's the only way I could see people coming in and back across the country. But that's not. The responsibility, uh, it's no different than in, like, say, my Uncle Pat or Cousin Ron. Somebody, even Jack, somebody steals uh, somebody steals from us, right? 
We can't send the cop to their house to go collect the money for us, right? We have to go through the court system and right. not use a state thing. And I said, that's, that's just not fair. We can't pick, especially for private companies. Like, that's not, that's not what we do. And so the, the, the bill that passed then is only for international bridges. Correct. Ah. The blue off. Uh, the, yeah. Right. So, because, uh, so, I mean, the traffic, the, uh, and there's a lot of issues that we've had to help people with, with, with these bridges. It's a number one, and it really does divide our city up. It really is going to divide the city up once there's tolls right. in two spots, plus the Independence Bridge, or not the, uh, the Lafayette Bridge, is going to be down for 30, mo- 30 months is what they're saying. Yep. Um, so guess what? We have an accident, or somebody's got to go to a school event, and and guess what? You you are in a situation where you are not going to make it, or you're you're just going to have to sit there. So I'm really this really confuses me because the international bridges. I mean, the state's not collecting the toll, are they? Um, no, no. Uh, the actually, well, so that's that's funny how that all works with that. Uh, but it is. Got to have some way, and I always thought it was a check and balance, some way that the, somebody that's coming into our state, at least if they're scamming, um, coming into the state five times to a uh, business, they're going to be scamming our businesses in our state, right? <laughs> so, uh, and that's, and it was set up that if they come across, I think in a 90 day or 60 day cycle, six times, then, then they can put a lien on their prop or lien on their thing. But I was like, you shouldn't have a lien. You got to take them to court, uh, but uh, but with that amendment, I could get at least get it so that way uh, we didn't have to deal with it across our state. Because I see this is the future at, uh, that everybody, once we open up the law before I got there, if you can't afford it in a township or village, and w- when do they stop? When do you stop and yeah. say, well, bridges we can't afford. Oh, now we can't afford parks. Oh, so we take our everything that we own as a city or township or village, and we sell it to a private entity, and they somehow collect a fee on it? That's not, that's not the state that I want to live in. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, you know, as long as we're on this topic of tolls, uh, do you see a, a, a toll road in our future? There's been a lot of talk about I-94, for example. Well, um, so let's talk about toll roads. Uh, they are made for a purpose, right? You get on, you go fast, you don't have anybody to bother you, and you get off, right? So if they're going to willing to do that, right, I, don't, I can't see regular roads in, in our state uh, – being told because it, it you've done it so many years the way that we have done it like look just watch you can watch and see what's going to happen in bay county over the next three to five years and how it's going to destroy it instead of bring us together so or we're going to have to find another option right uh for it so if you're going to take that and people don't like change i get that but you you can't you can't say even with employees hey you have sundays off and now you're going to say hey you work every sunday it doesn't work, and people resent, and then it's another reason for us to have people leave our state instead of just being a visit state. And we can't quit doing this. <laughs> mm-hmm. We just need to quit making people a reason to leave. Yeah. How do we – I love our state. I love our state, even the seasons and everything about it. Uh, yeah, it gets cold or it gets rainy, but that's hunting season or fishing season or, like, you know, and there's such – it's just so cool different times of the year and and – so, but we don't need another reason. We need to figure out a way to bring people back. Look at what other states are doing right, and do that. So let's add, let's talk about that for a minute, uh, because well, I'll tell you what. Let me let me lay this out, and I'll take a break, and then we'll come back. But sure, other states are laying a lot of money on the table. We'll talk about that when we come back. We're talking to State Representative Tim Beeson from the 96th District, and we will be back with more after these notes. Back with you on the Art Lewis Show, chatting with 96th District Representative Tim Beeson. So when we left, I uh, postured the question about how much money to put on the table to attract business to the state of Michigan. Other states have been doing it. What do we need to do to attract business and be competitive? Um, well, that's a that's a great question, Art. Uh, but first, with that question, I think that a lot of us legislators believe that as we attract business, we should really work on the infrastructure. I believe that like trying to get these businesses and these ready sites is to give it to the townships, villages, cities, and get the infrastructure in place. So it's all sitting there instead of hand the cash over to a subsidized um, company. 
uh, you know, and if they need some help, that's great. But uh, we have a lot of these little businesses that never, and I think that's what we're doing wrong. We keep trying to attract these great big businesses and all the jobs. And you and you and I can sit here and talk common sense. And we have a lot of great jobs that you can apply for in our city, in our town, in our all these communities right around here with the companies that we have, and we can't get the workers. So if you're going to keep doing and attracting these businesses, we've got to attract businesses that offer a hybrid schedule so they can still work somewhere else part-time if they want. No if and buts about it. So how do we uh, how do we compete with the Tennessees of the world? Once we, you know, if we do what you want, we establish the infrastructure and and have everything, you know, ready for for construction and whatever's needed. How do we tell these businesses they belong in Michigan? So a lot of those businesses, uh, it all depends on how easy it is to uh, ship, move your parts to and from, right? A lot of these businesses. I worked at Delphi. I understand because uh, it's close to the manufacturer and then because it's all shipping costs. You know, that's, that's what the, you know, that's the expensive part, which has been more service people, right? Because <laughs> you still got to yeah. get it from point A to point B. And uh, that's on our roads too. So trying to figure this out uh, so there our businesses are centrally located is great, but we've got to figure out a way to keep small business here and the mom and pop shops, the stores that you shop at are closing. And that's our, that's our, that's our youth job. That's your first job. That's your part-time job for your extra cash. And when you don't have those jobs for people that want to get ahead or say, Hey, I have a great style of living, but I want a vacation in London or go to the Bahamas or go fishing or hunting trip. If you don't have some way to make extra money, uh, it makes it makes it tough on a family, you know. Well, and you're fighting the Amazons and the the Wally World, well, Wally Worlds, and all those places. I mean, it's that's a tough fight for you, a local business. But you're also fighting our own uh, state regulations. Like I'm telling you, it's not easy to create a business in our state, and we need a fast way. And that's what I'm hoping that we can do in Lulio, some fast way to start a business, right? Without having to. Some of these, you don't need to go to college to understand uh, how to run a business. Basically, you just got to show up, do your service, and then you got to figure out how to manage your money, right? But that doesn't mean you need to take uh, uh, music appreciation to figure out how to do that, right? So, <laughs> yeah, unless you're I in the music business. <laughs> right, unless you're in the music business, right? And, and maybe for some small talk, if somebody says, I like this genre, right? Then you're like, oh, I learned about that in college, even though that, you see what I'm saying? Like, We've got to we got to figure out our system to make it so we have entrepreneurs because that's how uh, entrepreneurs are where the small jobs come from. I don't think that we have to keep and I and I did get on some of the boards with some of them. I'm not for giving out money to individual businesses. I am for giving out our taxpayer dollars to uh, townships, villages because of the mandates that we make at the state level for them to try to afford anyways. Yet at the same time. You know, the shared revenue seems to be going down, not up. Yeah, and, okay, so we just said, uh, and then you're going to add something to them, like, hey, you have to do this, or e the DEQ wants them to test their water, not just twice, but more times, and they're putting more. We, we, can't, we can't continue to put more people in government spending our dollar than when we have less population. You, <laughs> you've got to decrease your, your pop. You've got to decrease your government employee jobs to, to something that's manageable instead of we, we've almost, I think we doubled it, our Eagle budget. And I'm on that, I'm on that chair. I'm a vice chair there. And I think we doubled our amount of people that work for Eagle in the last three cycles. Yeah, but this, did, wasn't there some kind of legislation that addressed unfunded mandates? Um, just like there was some legislation that said that transparency should be there, but they just took that out of boilerplate. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, it's this was a this was a crazy two years, and I hope we got some change coming because you can't you can't make it so that people that are the directors and the department heads have more power than the people that you elect, right? It doesn't work when they come in, and that's what we need to go. Uh, that's and that happened with term limits, and I did, I voted for term limits. I thought it was the best thing ever, except for when you have a state representative that it takes three years or four years, majority minority. I was in both to even understand the backsides of the budget and the budget meetings, right? Because when you're in the majority, you get all these asks, right? When you're in the minority, you have all this time to work in uh, in your community and be at everything you can be at and learn how the budget works. And a lot of people are just there for a stepping stone and they're not there long enough. And then they, 
use the Senate or use the House, and bam, they're gone, and they leave the pieces for all of us to pick up to try to figure out how townships are going to pay for this, or cities, or villages. Yeah. Well, uh, you and, and I, I, you and I would have a, a a disagreement on term limits. I don't believe in them, but that's uh, me. Right? No, I, I don't believe in them now. <laughs> oh, okay. I, no, I don't believe in them now. I, I did believe them when I voted for it in 1992 when they came in place. Ah, I was like, yeah. okay, all right, I got you. Well, I didn't understand. Just like anything, well, and I should have thought you can't get a good worker in three or four years, right? Especially in, in my industry with so many different six six. I think we had what sixteen thousand items and like. 8,000 in the meat department, like there's so many items you can make, right? Like there's so right. many different things and that knowledge, right? Hey, it's, it's chili time. Let's put this on sale, right? That yeah. knowledge it's of somebody experience. firing six years, we, we, we screwed ourselves in the state of Michigan because now you have people that are not uh, actually not actually want anything. And they're running our state in these departments that, that are given that job that sometimes they didn't come up from the department. Now the people that come up from the department that understand the beginning job to the end job, I got no problem with, but the people that get thrown into a department head are, uh, and then they're like, yeah, I'm the department head. And you've never worked in that department. I got to tell yeah, you, yeah. that's your, yep. Yep. That ship has sailed. All right. Hang on. <laughs> we'll do one more segment. Tim Beeson, our guest this morning, and we will return with the representative after these notes. As we head into them. All right. Back with you as we chat with state representative, Tim Beeson from the 96th district. So, Tim, the budget's in the can, and we move forward. What would what's next on the agenda for you? What do you see as uh, as the uh, most pressing issues right now going forward? I think that we need to uh, figure out a way to help the businesses that are coming in February. Um, and then it's kind of funny because it has to do with uh, uh, employees that are tipped, and we have both presidential candidates talking about not taxing tips, right? So the people that are going to be affected most, right? We have the national saying, we're going to come through for you, both sides. And we have a state saying the tip, tip credit is going away. <laughs> oh, the, it's just, uh, so I think that's pressing to get back to work in Lansing on something for a fix for, uh, cause these businesses in February, I mean, we've surveyed them, we checked and even the, servers and, and waitresses don't want it. So we got to figure some way that we can come back to the table for them, the people that are actually doing the job and not the mandate coming down. Well, since this was a petition drive from the public, what recourse do you have now that the courts have ruled? Well, um, so, so there was different things, but that happened in 2018 before COVID, you know that, right? right. So, uh, and now since COVID has happened, we have restaurants that are still closed on Monday. Go up north, Art. You oh, yeah. Can't get... yeah so, so now we're going to make it. It said that one in four out of five restaurants, uh, one of them are going to close, and the other ones are going to uh, be closed more days, right? So because this is a actually a tax on the backside of the business because they have to pay more. Um, because the wage goes higher, you also have to pay more. It's, gonna, it's a tip credit to all the things that you pay for, like your Social Security, and that's all going to go up. So the businesses are going to have to – uh, double their rate to the state and to the, the right away. So that's kind of curious that how do we do it so those businesses aren't affected, right? Because every time we do another mandate, right, it affects business and people throw up their arms. And if you look at our population, especially in Bay County, the oldest population, uh, and that's why I'm good at cribbage and euchre and, and pinochle and canasta. Uh, <laughs> don't forget hearts or spades. I got to know how to play all of them. If you ever want to sit down, you need a, a fourth person, call me up. Um, uh, and it's these, the, there has to be, they're just closing their arms. They're closing their business. They're like, it's not worth it. I'm fighting. And like, I have a family members that are working six days a week right now to keep their business open. And these are great businesses, but they're there every day because they can't find workers. And now you're going to tell them they're going to have to pay more in. I see, I see you're going to lose the things that we have now, the restaurants, even at the golf courses, you're going to lose those kitchens and stuff because they're not going to be able to staff them. So, so we're going to have less uh, uh, unless you want to pay a lot more money to the ones that, uh, and that's yeah, it's it's, too, it's, 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 prices are going to go up. And this, it, it seems to me, I've said this many times. It, it's a, it's a minimum wage is a false narrative. And the reason I say that is, if you raise everybody's wages, 
all the prices go up. In fact, you're not ahead. If if minimum wage raising had worked, then we would have raised the minimum wage, and that would have been it. But every year we seem we're raising minimum wage. And why is that? Well, it's because all the prices go up and you don't get ahead. Well, but, and our... And that's what I'm saying about if we have an entrepreneurship where people feel like they have the options, whether they work for somebody or even have the options to deal with the the public, they get to negotiate their own wage, right? Minimum wage is a starting wage. If you're still making minimum wage at the job after six months, even for my store, obviously you're not meant to do that job. You should find a different job, right? It really should. It's the only reason why you're doing it is there's extra cash or, or it fits into your schedule, right? Even like my best workers, they didn't make minimum wage. Once that they, I always told them, if you're a great worker, I need you here. So if you're asking for a lot of time off, you're really not my great worker, right? Right. Like it makes sense. And uh, I tell you, every time you raise that, it's got to come somewhere. And Michigan, it, it, it's it's fragile. Our food, our food industry is fragile in the state of Michigan, from our suppliers to our little stores to our big stores. Yeah. We still are not getting the product. Some days it's short and. It's just, I, I don't know. I just don't want us to go backwards, right? Yeah, you got to start going forward. Well, Tim, I want to thank you for uh, spending the time with us this morning, as always. And uh, we'll chat with you again down the road. Thank you so much. You have a great a great holiday weekend coming up. Ah, you too. Thanks. Yep. Uh, bye-bye Bye-bye now. 96 District State Representative Tim Beeson, we thank him for joining us this morning. Do you know that air duct cleaning is... This hour, the Art Lewis Show. Uh, coming up next hour, we're going to start by talking to Patsy Powell from New Dimensions in Bay City about their Frank Sinatra tribute fundraising concert. And then we'll have open phones after that. That's what's coming up. But first, the news from CBS, bringing you up to date on the world and the nation. Michael Perch in the newsroom with the local report. That's what's ahead, and we'll be back right after that. Broadcasting from the storm. TV talk shows has died. CBS News confirms Phil Donahue is gone at the age of 88. His show debuted in 1967. It ran for 30 years, paving the way for others, including Oprah. Topics ranged from global to personal issues. Should we decrease or stop matching the Russians in nuclear technology? Do we have a shot at an integrated America where we really do get rid of these fears? These young men want to get married, and they're serious about it. Donahue, who was divorced from his first wife, went on to marry former That Girl star Marlo Thomas. Their romance began after she appeared on his show in 1977. He said they flirted shamelessly for the entire hour. Again, pioneering talk show host Phil Donahue, his publicist says, is dead at the age of 88. Sources tell CBS News former Republican Congressman George Santos will plead guilty today to multiple felony counts in a federal fraud case. Correspondent Scott McFarlane from Federal Court in New York. A guilty plea would spare Santos from a high-profile trial here next month, but it raises the prospect, if not the likelihood, he'll serve prison time. He faces 23 federal counts, including wire fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds. Just confirmed GM laying off more than a 1,000 salaried software and services employees, WWJ's Jeff Gilbert's in Detroit. A GM statement saying they need to simplify for speed and excellence and make bold choices. A source within the company saying they're constantly reviewing what jobs are needed as they develop new products. All car makers are keeping a very tight line on their costs as they spend money to transition to electric vehicles. The Dow is up 70 points. This is CBS News. Sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Get renter's insurance to protect the things that make your place a home, including coverage for theft or damage. Visit Progressive.com. It's Soaring Eagles back to... Live from the 100.5 and 790 Newsroom, this is WSGW News. Sunny skies and 65 degrees at 10.05. Good morning, I'm Mike Kircher. Police in Mount Morris Township are investigating an SUV discovered in a lake yesterday morning around 9.20 a.m. A fisherman at Flint Park Lake called 911 to report the vehicle, identified as a Cadillac Escalade. Personnel from the Genesee County Sheriff's Department underwater search and recovery team were able to get the vehicle attached to a tow truck around 11 a.m., which was pulled out of the water. There were no people inside the SUV. Police say it's the third vehicle to pull from that lake this year. 
The city of Midland is asking residents to participate in a survey to help determine the future of the downtown pedestrian plaza. Since 2020, the plaza has provided a two-block, vehicle-free area of Main Street for expanded shopping, dining, gathering, and events each summer. In 2022, the Midland City Council gave multi-year approval to renew the plaza annually from early June to late September through the 2025 season. However, whether the pedestrian plaza continues or stops after that is to, has not been decided. The survey is asking residents and visitors about their experiences with the plaza and their opinions about the future use of the space. Surveys should be completed by October 6th at midnight. It can be found online at cityofmidlandmi.gov slash ecityhall. Those without internet access can call 989-837-3304. Latino Leaders for the Enhancement of Advocacy and Development, or LEAD, of Saginaw and the Michigan Small Business Development Center are inviting local entrepreneurs and small business owners to two upcoming workshops focusing on growth and sunsetting. The first will be held Thursday at 1302 Court Street in Saginaw to discuss strategies on how to expand a business. The second will take place August 29th at SVRC's Marketplace Cobb King, which will focus on the idea of how to exit your business by selling, closing, or passing it on. Both workshops are free and open to the public, though pre-registration is recommended as space is limited. Please call 989-714-8975 or visit the Lead Saginaw Chapter Facebook page for registration information. WSGW News Time 1007. With a focus on memory care. EW News Time 1008, the weather forecast is coming up. A possible work stoppage at Canada's two largest railroads could disrupt U.S. supply chains. The railroads... Canadian Pacific Kansas City and Canadian National are starting to shut down their networks as a labor dispute with the Teamsters Union threatens lockouts or strikes. Bargaining is scheduled to continue today with the union, which represents nearly 10,000 workers at both railroads. Negotiations have been going on since last November. A long work stoppage could cause significant supply chain disruption, including in Detroit. Is the arrival of low-cost Chinese electric vehicles in the U.S. market inevitable? Here's Autobeat reporter Jeff Gilbert. For now, high tariffs are keeping Chinese EVs out, but dealer consultant Dave Canton says as consumers learn about the low prices of Chinese models, there could be demand. He says car makers and politicians need to look for win-win solutions. It's, it's a balance. It really comes down to making sure we're not taking jobs away, but at the same time, Giving, uh, giving consumers the ability to have more, more affordability. Analysts point out that early resistance to Japanese and Korean brands weakened when those car makers started building plants here in the U.S. Jeff Gilbert, the Michigan News Network. The 2024 Emmett Charlevoix County Fair is this week in Petoskey. And the carnival rides open Tuesday. Trace Adkins, the country music star, will be in concert on Wednesday night. And it's the return of the Monster Truck Showdown on Thursday. WSGW News Time 1010. I'm Mike Percha. West Side Decorating Center. Good morning. Welcome to hour number two of the Art Lewis Show. Later on, we'll have open phones, but we're going to start this hour. Talking about uh, a fundraising event, which has happened before, and it's really a good one, put on by New Dimensions of Bay City. And uh, with us this morning from New Dimensions, we say good morning to Patsy Powell. Patsy, good morning. Well, good morning, Art. How are you today? I am doing well. So how many years now for this uh, this fundraising event? Um, this is the first time I'm doing it at... Um and partnering up with the Willow Lounge. Um, but New Dimensions has been in business. We're celebrating 50 years this Ooh, year. Oh, we've been around a while. Yeah, kind of exciting. Yeah. So I, this event's been done by all, by others then, uh, but this is your first time at it. Uh, so yes. give us an idea of, uh, first, what the event is and then where the proceeds go. Okay. Well, it's a tribute to Frank Sinatra night, and it'll be held at the Willow Lounge, which is located on the corner of Midland and Two Mile in Bay City. It'll be an outdoor event, and our Frank Sinatra will be entertaining us from 7 until 9.30. We will also be selling raffle tickets 50-50 to earn a little more money, and then we have a basket of cheer donated by my friend Carol Poyer that we're going to also raffle off. So somebody will go home with a really nice basket of drinks. 
and the money will go toward our fleet. We have nine vehicles, and we use those nine vehicles to transport individuals with disabilities to their job, to their job interview, um, out in the community, um, depending on whatever program that they're enrolled in, and we have several that they can choose from. So we pick them up maybe at their house and take them where they, you know, where their choice is for the day. And then we pick them back up if we don't stay with them and help them. Um, we would pick them back up and take them back home. So and we need to update that fleet a little bit. So tell us, uh, first of all, uh, the cost of the evening tickets. The cost, the tickets are $15 um, well, if you reasonable. buy them. Yeah, very reasonable. Um, if you buy them before the event starts, however, you can call me and pay by Venmo or PayPal and go on our will call list, and I can save you that $5 at the gate. And when is the event? The event is tomorrow night, August 20th. The gates will open at 5 o'clock, and the show will start at 7. And the Willow has put out, um, they have... A drink stand for you know if you want to order drinks and they can order food right from outside they don't even need to go into the bar and they can be served right outside where they're enjoying the show all right so tell us a little bit about new dimension what is the what's give me an overview of the organization well we serve bay and aranac county and have for the past 50 years um, we have programs like um, CLS, which is Community Living Support. So say you're an individual with disabilities and you don't know how to take the bus or maybe you want to go to the zoo or um, let me think of things. You want to go learn how to do laundry at the laundromat. If you're referred to our agency, that is something we would assign a job coach to you know, find a good match for that person. And we would help them learn the skills that they want to learn just to get them out in the community. You know, because a, a lot of people with adults are sitting home. They're not, you know, a lot of adults with disabilities, I'm sorry, I mixed that up. They're, they're sitting home not doing anything. And we want to help get them out in the community and do some things that they want to do. And then we have um, a skill building program. And if you're referred to that, then we're helping individuals prepare for work in the community. If they want to get a job, we want to give them the skills to get that job. And if they want to if they want a job, they would progress into our supported employment program, which then we can actually, we're out talking to businesses and asking them, you know, would you be willing to try one of our individuals? Um, we have a grant that allows us to pay, say, 40 hours and use that as an interview time. You know, sometimes you have that stigma of this adult has disabilities and, uh, you know, they probably can't work as well as we think they could or as well as somebody else could. So to kind of get around that stigma, we have a grant from the United Way. We're partner agencies. And we can offer 40 hours and say, look, we'll pay them. New Dimensions will pay them. And you try them out for 40 hours. And at the end of the 40 hours, let's talk about it. You know, it can be an, a learning experience for the individual, you know, what things they can do well. Maybe that's not the job they want at all, but maybe they figure out there's something else that they'd like to do that we could try. And then, again, the employer may just decide, hey, I do have a spot for this person, and then they have the opportunity to go ahead and hire them. And with staff being short everywhere, we think that would be a good way to help with the shortage and get some of our folks out getting a job so they can spend money and pay taxes and feel great about themselves. And it's, it's just an overall good thing. And how long has New Dimensions been around? 50 years. Oh, wow. We're celebrating 50 years this year. Um, actually, we're doing a chamber event September 19th. Uh, Vinny is sponsoring the food and the drinks for us, and we're going to be the main attraction at the after hours for the Chamber of Commerce. 
and we'll have you know we'll have some stuff there to raffle off too but it's really you know folks come out and celebrate 50 years with us because I don't know about everybody else, but to me, 50 years is a really big deal. Yeah. And, and especially if you made it through COVID and we're a nonprofit, 501c3, you know, it's, it, was a, it was a difficult time to make through. I'll bet. So how are you funded? Um, well, we are funded through Medicaid dollars that come through a referring agency. That referring agency could be Barrier Neck Behavioral Health. It could be... Um, MRS, it could be any of the mental health facilities um, in the city. There's MPA, there's, um, I'm trying to think of all of them, LIST. There's a whole bunch of them. We also take referrals from private insurance companies for individuals, say, that were injured in a car accident. Maybe they have a traumatic brain injury. And, you know, they could have worked all their life and then poof, you have an accident, and now you not only can't take care of yourself, but you can't go back and do that job you used to be able to yeah. do. And and we can work with them and find, you know, work very closely, one-on-one with them, find out what it is that they can do, find out what they want to do, and what resources we have to help them do that. You know, we also offer job coaching. So if if a person gets the job but they still need a little help, rather than having the employer have to, you know, hire somebody extra to help, free of charge, we'll go in and help them for as long as they need. Mm. So they get that support. They keep their job. They're happier, you know, productive in society. It's just kind of a win-win all the yeah. way around. All right, so let's remind everybody again about the fundraiser tomorrow. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Doors open at 5. Uh, it's $15 if you get them in advance. If you want to call me and reserve tickets, uh, my number, my cell phone is 989-326-1831. And I will put you on a will call list if you, you can pay by Venmo or... PayPal or whatever app it is. I'm sure you, I have one, too. And then we can put you on the will call list, and you just show up. Your name's on the list. You come on in and have a good time. All right. It's going to be at the Wheelu Lounge, which is at Two Mile and Midland. And uh, sounds like a fun time. Yeah, it should be great. I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm actually going to MC it. So that will be my first time ever emceeing an event so if you want to laugh at me come on out <laughs> it should it should be fun i'm sure i'll mix up a few words or something and we can all laugh about uh, you'll it you'll do fine you'll do fine <laughs> Thank all right you. patsy well listen thanks for being with us this morning and telling us about it and we hope you have a big crowd i hope so too thank you so much art you bet bye-bye okay now. bye-bye Patsy Powell from New Dimensions in Bay City. Tomorrow night, their Frank Sinatra tribute. We will take a break, come back for the remainder of the hour. It's open phones, 989-752-6111 is the number to call. We're proud to make... All right, we're back with you on the Art Lewis Show for this Monday morning. Phones are locked and loaded, so we'll go to them this morning. And we begin with Linda in Bay City. Linda, good morning. Good morning. Go ahead. I'm calling on a twofold. Um, New dimensions. Our daughter is now 56 years old, special needs, and we have been with New Dimensions since she left the school program when she was 27. So almost, almost 30 years. I cannot say enough. Back in the day, in fact, I was chairman of the board over there. I've served on the board for years. Haven't recently. However, currently she's not able to maintain a job. Um, She is very social. Too social, in fact, to get a job because she can't mind her own business. (laughs) So um, she has gone into their CLS program, which Patsy was telling you about, and it has been a lifesaver for us. She goes with them two mornings a week, and in, she loves to play putt-putt, loves to golf, um, loves art, loves to go to coffee. 
And in the wintertime, they will go to Frankenmuth and play putt-putt inside in the game room over there. They go to Dow Gardens. They go bowling. She is just so happy with that program because it gives her an out. You know, i got to tell you, Linda, what I particularly like about this call. It's all positive. Absolutely. Love it. I I have nothing bad to say. And anyone who can support that program tomorrow night at the Willow Lounge, I say go for it. Mm -hmm. They've not only put on a good program, but they really do need to update their fleet. I can attest to that. (laughs) Um, I can, in fact, I could tell you a few things that are wrong with it, but they need help. Yep. And they can't do it all on uh, Medicaid dollars. So yeah. they really need the help. Number two, we know and love Timmy Beeson. His mother used to help me care for my daughter. Um, we go back a long ways. Hmm. However, what he was saying this morning, it's not a however, absolutely true. He is a hardworking guy. He cares about the people in his district. You're talking about minimum wage. Yesterday, I took my daughter out for an ice cream cone at McDonald's. Used to be 99 cents, right? <laughs> I know what's coming. A dollar eighty-nine. Yep. End of subject. Yeah, I'm afraid that's uh, the wave of the future. So, yep. well, listen, Linda, first of all, uh, you know, it, 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 your daughter is blessed to have you as a mother, and uh, I'm a fighter. Yeah, well, and <laughs> blessed all, to have I new dimension. All life. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. That's what it takes, you know. We wish you well. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks. And please support New Dimensions. All right. Thanks for calling. Goodbye. Bye bye now, Linda in Bay City. Heartwarming story. And let's talk to Jim in Bay City. Jim, good morning. Yes, you had Tim Beeson on there. I wish you would have asked him why he let his daughter be king of the John Glenn Homecoming Fest. Yeah, all right, we've been through this before, and that's his business. So. King is for a boy. Yeah, okay, good enough. And he, he was going all right, to Jim. the school. If we've been through this before, you. Jim. We're not going to get an answer. You. Well, I wish somebody from the school would call in. I'm not voting for him anymore. Okay, I that's your privilege. That's your privilege. That's for a boy. There's a All lot right, of boys we got you. Mad. We got you. Why didn't you ask him? It's none of my business. You know about it. Well, you're goofy too, then. Thank you very much. Bye. And let's talk to Owen up in Beaverton. Owen, good morning. Good morning. This is Owen. I have an idea. Yeah, Owen, hang on. Hang, Owen, I'm going to put you on hold. Hang on for a minute, all right? All right. Hang on for a minute. I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, now, Owen, you there? Yes. Good. Go ahead. Um, I have an idea for the road construction projects in Michigan. You know how they're putting their little uh, sign that says 70 miles per hour and at what your speed is? Mm-hmm. Well, we should put cameras on every single speed limit sign that has one of them on it. And if anybody is like five miles over the regular speed limit, then the state police in that division would mail them a ticket home. Yeah. Well, there are some places in the world to do that. Um but it's not without controversy. And so I have a, oh, sorry. No, that's all right. Go ahead. Um, I have a, another question. Like in the middle of October, when we have a uh, open line hour, would it be possible I can advertise my hymn sing that we're having for Skeels Christian School? Yeah, I'll tell you what I want you to do, though. I want you to send me the information. You have a computer? Yep. Okay. Send it to Art Lewis, one word, at WSGW.com, maybe a week okay. before the event, just so I can look at it and see what it is, all right? All okay. right. There you go. I just wanted to, I thought that would be a good way of maybe getting it out there some more. Sure. Well, we'll take and, a look. Uh, no, no doubt. Probably is. They're, they're trying to build a new building. Yeah. 
No, we'll be glad to help. Just send me the information. Okay, I will. Good enough. Thanks, Owen. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye Bye. now. And that was the lines for you, 989-752-6111. All right. Uh, I had a couple of things I'd pulled down. Uh, um, oh, here it is. <laughs> I don't know how many times we've talked about this, but uh, we're not too far away. Believe it or not, you know, we're sitting here third week of August. And in another couple of months, we'll be talking about daylight savings time going away and standard time coming back in, falling back which this year is uh, November 3rd, 2 o'clock in the morning, November 3rd officially. And as always, every time the subject comes up, the topic of whether or not we should have time switches come up. Do we need to have daylight savings time or standard time? Or should we have one time? And if we should have one time... What should that time be? Now, for me, and this is just my opinion, nothing else, if we're going to stay on a particular time, I would want that time to be daylight savings time. My reason for that is I'm not as concerned about being dark in the morning when I go to work. I'd rather have the daylight in the evening. I'd rather have those longer evening hours. But again, that's just the way I look at it, and I know there are lots of people that look at it differently. But it's a subject that keeps coming up. And there are a lot of people who say, hey, just leave it the way it is. I don't mind changing the clock twice a year. So, something to think about. We'll take a break. Lines are open for you, 989-752-6111. When you have... All right, we're back with you. We'll get back to our phones in just a moment here. Just I want to take a couple of seconds to tell you that WSGW and our sister station, 94.5 The Moose, have teamed up with uh, Valley Heating and Cooling to honor hometown heroes. We're asking you to submit photos and recognitions of active military, veterans, or first responders. As a special thank you to our hometown heroes, three random drawings will take place to win gifts from Valley Heating and Cooling, including a $100 Visa gift card, a free maintenance and service checkup, and a $5,000 voucher to Valley Heating and Cooling. You can see the gallery of hometown heroes and submit your hero online at WSGW.com. 1042, back to our phones. Our buddy Errol is with us this morning. Speaking of first responders, <laughs> retired. <laughs> thank, thank you for that, Art. Thank you. Hey, I made a decision yesterday, only after I've been studying the candidates that want to run the country. Yeah. I absolutely will not vote for the emperor, and I will not vote for the one that wants to be president now, and it's because I don't like her philosophy. She, I don't know why she wants to give someone a pile of money to buy their first home that can go out and work for it. Like you don't, wait, wait, wait. You don't know why? I know why. Oh, I know why, because I've been, I've been reading about Buying votes. what she's been doing. <laughs> huh? Buying votes. Well, yeah, well, I know, but she she didn't do anything with the border. She take take a, take a trip down there. Yeah. So anyway, I am not going to vote for the national thing. I will vote for people that are in this state that I've heard of them. They're on your show. Or they've been on your show, and they're local, and I know who they that, are. That's so, that's fine. I mean, that's the decision yeah. we all have. You know, that's uh, yep. That's what makes it yeah, great. Now, we go to the polls and we vote the way we want to vote. Yeah, and the other thing is, Art, are you still in the tour business? No. Because I want to take a trip. This is going to be a long one. I want to take a trip to Mars because they just <laughs> discovered, now you got to listen, they just discovered water on that planet. Yeah, I heard but that. It's, it's down about three miles, I believe, 
and but it's in the it's in the rock formations and stuff like that. And if they they might drill for it and bring it up, it will cover Mars with an ocean that's a mile to three miles deep. Can we go? If you're in the tour business. No way, hey, Errol, I'm going to send you to Mars. <laughs> well, they, no, they uh. don't make candy bars. But I, <laughs> I, think it would be an, I think it would be a really nice trip, you know. It would, so. it would uh, be um, sufficiently longer than you and I have. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm not going any place. Where are you planning on going? <laughs> I Same place. On this planet for a reason. With a loud mouth, uh, my daughter says, your motor mouth. But I've enjoyed every every minute that I've been on here. Uh, you know, yeah, so me too. Some people don't like that, but that's tough. That's right. But anyway, so have a nice day, sir. <laughs> All right. I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I come you up with a tour to Mars, I'll let you know. I'm on your list. Okay. <laughs> That's all I want. All right, Errol. I, I thanks. As long as I'm on the list. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye now. And let's talk to Al in Bay City before we take a break. Al, good morning. Morning, Arthur. Um, I just want to comment. Uh, I hope everybody supports Fancy Powell and the New Dimensions because they do such a great job in the county. And the guy that does Frank Sinatra sounds just like Frank. So, if you really want to see a good concert, I hope everybody turns out. All Thank right. You. Good enough. Thanks, Al. Bye-bye now. All right. Uh, and, again, he's reminding us of uh, what we talked about at the beginning of the hour, the Frank Sinatra tribute at Wheeloo Lounge uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, for the benefit of New Dimensions. 15 bucks to get in or 20 bucks at the door. That's that, that's really reasonable, i got to tell you. That's a very, very reasonable fee for a, for a fundraising show. All right, uh, we'll uh, take a pause here. Lines are open for you. Anything you want to chat about, you can give us a jingle. Dare you not to get this song stuck. All right, back with you on the Art Lewis Show, and let's uh, get back to our phones. Bill is in Saginaw Township. Bill, good morning. Good morning, Art. I've got a website for our friend Errol. It's going to keep him busy for about the first time he gets on, about five hours. It's called (laughs) spaceweather.com. Spaceweather.com. What's on it? Yes. It's everything that you could imagine, all the meteors that are headed towards Earth and all the solar storms. And and you can even branch it out to other form government uh, things where they watch the space and everything that's going on. And it is an interesting website. It just goes on and on forever. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Wow. Yeah, that's unbelievable. That I just does have a lot of stuff. Sunspots yeah, and, can... and afterglows and all kinds of stuff. Position of the moon. and that. It is, Wow. And look at those other links. That's uh, ah, aerospace see. lab and all that. You can just go on forever. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Flybys. Let's see what that is. That's got to be meteors or first time I got on that thing. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, boy, there's a ton on here. Live sky view of satellites, uh, orbits. uh, Boy, you name it. Deep space. You can zero in on every one of those asteroids headed towards the Earth, and it'll tell you how big they are, where they're going, and how far they're going to miss us. (laughs) Unbelievable. That is really cool. I'm going to have to mark that one down for myself. It's called. I got a. I want to test Arrow's memory too. He can tell if he's getting old or not by how good his memory is. He knows he's getting old. <laughs> many, many years ago, at a credit that was back when it was the Saginaw Municipal Employees Credit Union, we had a party, and he was there and I was there, and they rationed off. They gave off not rationed, but they gave awarded prizes. Yeah. And I got a great big Coleman cooler. And Errol got, of all things, a kitty fire extinguisher. <laughs> That's great for a battalion chief. Perfect. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> so I wasn't real fond of the cooler, so I went over to him and I offered to swap him. And I traded him the Coleman cooler for the fire extinguisher. Ah, oh, that's wild. How and long, I, I don't remember how many that? years ago that I, was. That was back when I was at the old fire hall over there on Wheeler. It's got to be a and, long time ago. 
Oh, it was, yeah. And I still have the fire extinguisher, and it's still charged up. <laughs> so, really? One of those big ones, yeah. That's funny. So if he can remember that, he's not getting old. His memory's in pretty good shape. I'll bet he remembers. Yeah, I've known him a long time. <laughs> yes, he's an interesting person. There was he a lot is. of wonderful people at municipal employees. They used to just love that party every year. Yeah. Well, there were, there were a lot of good people. I mean, you know, it was... And that was at a time when uh, the employment numbers were a lot higher than they are now. Yes, yes, indeed. And uh, everybody's gone now that I knew. I'm, I'm kind of a charter member of the thing. But the only one I know that's still there is the gal by the name of Kathy. She retired once, and then she discovered that uh, retirement wasn't for her and went back to work. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people like that. That's why I'm not going to retire. <laughs> You're wise. Yeah, I made the biggest mistake I ever made in my life like that. I retired, and I shouldn't have. Well, you know, it's, it's I, I'll tell you, though, I mean, if, you know, it depends what you do. If I were a first responder and beat my body up for years, I'd probably want to retire. But I have the kind of job where I sit on my fanny, and as long as my mind and my mouth works, I can do the job. And I, uh, and I, and I love it. And so there's no reason to think about retiring because I love it. And age is just a number with me. It doesn't matter to me. That's right. It doesn't matter a bit. I'm 88 years old. Oh, you got me by seven. Me with, okay. I still got my 45-year-old brain. Yeah, that's yeah, you got the same brain I do. <laughs> and I, that's right. And I had a job in the jewelry arts. And I worked for 38 years for a prominent Saginaw jewelry store, and I retired out of there like a fool. I was working three days a week, no nights, no holidays, no nothing. I was, I, I did it all. I was kind of a handy guy to have around a jewelry store. Yeah. And I walked away from that like a fool. Yeah. And I, it was a real responsible job, and everybody asked me different things all the time. And then all of a sudden, I woke up one morning after I retired. And, I discovered that no one cared much what I thought about anything anymore. Yeah, that's the shock of it. You know, I tell I tell my political friends when they leave office and, and others who have had, uh, you know, prominent positions, I said, when you retire, you're going to discover something. You're going to discover your phone stops ringing because the people yep. who were calling you only wanted you because you could do something for them. Absolutely. And they all tell me you're absolutely right. You know. Yeah, it's very, very true, and it's really a void. See, I could do it all. I apprenticed from the old original owner of the store, and he got me started off on the right foot, and I was a licensed, Michigan State licensed watchmaker, clockmaker, manufacturing jeweler, and I could even run the joint when the boss decided to ah, go to Florida for a while. The, the highly desirable skill. Yeah, and I, I walked away from that. Just yeah. unbelievable. He educated me. They just... I, I just got the job by accident because yep. I happened to walk in the foyer of the store to get out of the rain and started <laughs> visiting with the owner. There you go. And he asked me, that's what I, I don't have any patience with these people, you know, that like a beautiful, wonderful country like America. Oh, I, I just can't make it. I don't yeah, know what to do it's, and all this and that. Get off your stuff and, and learn. That's the way. That's right. And I decided to educate myself. I quit school on my 16th birthday in the first semester mm. of the 10th grade. Yeah. Uh, well, sounds like you did all right. Accident. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, I got to run, but uh, appreciate the call. Do it again. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye mm -hmm. now. Bye. And we'll be back to close out. For over 25 years, Linex is. Lewis Show for today. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on Focus, we're going to learn about Senior Services of Midland with Trina Winans. That's coming up right after the news. The news, of course, CBS News with the National and International Report. Michael Percher with the Local Report. That's next. Broadcasting from the storm.